Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here already, I solve a lot of questions on this channel and I want to provide you the resources to succeed. So with that being said, I'm going to do two solutions for this problem and the reason is that I want you to have the foundation to build upon if you don't come up with the most optimal solution right away. So that's why I spend my time showing you both solutions. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button because that helps me create these content for you guys. Awesome, so let's go into the video. Awesome, let's read the question together. So a peak element is an element that is greater than its neighbors. Now that's a really broad statement. So what is exactly a peak element? Well, a peak element is where um, we have a case like this, like let's say this is our input, and um, we need to return this three because this is a peak element between two and one, which are the neighbors. So if you notice here um, that this element three and which we need to return the index, that's why it says two here. Um, so this element three is actually larger than its next neighbor. So what we can observe is that an element which is larger than its next element is considered a peak element. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, so there are three cases that could happen for this problem. So either our peak element is at the beginning of the list, so either it's up here at the first element, or it could be in the middle of the list, anywhere in the middle. Like we can imagine some other um, numbers here after this, or it could be at the end of the list. And these are the three situations that we need to take care of. Um, and we've already defined what our peak element means. So our peak element means that the current element, which in this case, let's take this element, is larger than our next element. And in this case, this current element is also larger than our next element. And in this case, this has to be the peak element because it's the last element. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I will define the um, last index that our um, loop is going to go to, and that's going to be one less than um, the length. And that's because at each position, we're going to go and access the next element, right? So if we're at two, we're going to already access the next element. So we don't want to be at the last element and trying to access something that's not there. So that's why we will only go up to one less than um, our end and access that element. And if we don't find anything, then we know that the last element is the peak, which is this third case. So I will go ahead and do that. So I will say n equals len um, nums minus one. And what I'm going to do is write my for loop. So for i in range from zero to n, and then I'm going to check if the nums at that index if the current position is greater than our next position and how do we get to the next position we just reach over so we do i plus one and if this is the case oh oops no brackets in python oh my bad okay uh if that is the case then what we do is we just return the index right and return i okay great awesome and if we don't have anything to return, if we don't find this peak, that means that that last element is the peak. So we're going to go ahead and return um, the n, which is the index of the last element, right? Because we're going from 0 to um, n minus 1. So this is the index of the last element since we start at 0. Okay, awesome. So let's go ahead and run code. Oh, oops, I forgot to indent. Okay, run code and submit. Awesome, accept it. So let's go ahead and optimize this solution. Awesome, so now we're gonna look at how binary search can be used to optimize this problem. And to get our time complexity to log n from O of n, which is what our linear scan used in the previous solution. So what I've done here is I've taken the same examples um, at first just to keep things really simple. And we are going to do a modified version of binary search. So if you haven't done binary search before, I recommend doing um, a just normal binary search before trying this problem because it will make sense um, after you do just the regular way. Then you can see how you can use it to solve this problem. You are welcome to keep watching if you want, just to see how it can be used and maybe get some ideas about how this search works. Okay, in this problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this same logic, but we will use it um, to look at our mid and our mid plus one. So what does this mean? So our mid here is two. If we take this as our left index and this as our right index, our mid is going to be this uh, element at two. And what we need to do is we're just gonna compare mid and mid plus one. So we're comparing two if two is greater than one or not. 
And if it is, what we can do is we can narrow down our search space to only this part of the list. And did you see how we're using divide and conquer to solve this problem? Because we know that if this condition is true, then the solution must be on this side of our list. The answer cannot be on the other side because we know that, okay, we have a number here which is greater than the next number. So this is a condition that allows us to find the peak. So what we do in this case is we just move the right pointer over here, right? And in the next iteration, the mid will be three. So it will take the index of zero and one and the mid will be found to be three. And we do the same thing here and we check if three is greater than two and it is. And um, what we do in this case is we, um, we again move the right pointer over, right? So the right pointer is now going to be sitting exactly where the left pointer is. They're both at the same position. And this will get us our answer. And the answer that should be returned from this list is going to be zero because three is in zero position. So that's how we can use binary search to solve this problem. Awesome, let's look at another example. So here we will have our right pointer and left pointer starting at um, index zero for the left pointer and right pointer will be starting at two and our mid is going to be at this position three. So again, we're gonna compare, is three greater than two? Well, no, it's not. So what we do is we know that our search space is going to be only at this part of our list. Um, and why do we know that? And we know that because our next element is less um, than our current element, which is the case here. So two is less than three. So there is a possibility that this could be our peak, which is why we narrowed down our search space. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do in the next iteration, the mid will come out to be one, right? Um, and when the mid is one, we compare one is one greater than three. And the answer is no. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to move our left index over one. Right, so mid is currently zero, so we're gonna move left over one at this position, at three. And we're moving that because we know that, okay, what we're trying to find ideally is a number that has one element that is lower than it and one element that is higher than it, right? So that's that's what will create a peak. So if we had a graph, um, we want a lower element and then a higher element and then a lower element again, right? So this is what a peak is. So that's what we're trying to look here. And that's why the binary search can be used to solve this problem. Okay, let's do another example before we start writing the code. So this is the second example from the question. And here we have our right as um, the last spot in our list and then uh, left as our first index. And we know that the mid is going to be here at um, index two, right? So this is going to be our mid. And we can see that um, our mid is greater than its next element, which is one here. So this is greater. So what we need to do is we know that the search space is going to be here, right? Okay, so we move our right index over. So now right is pointing to here, it's no longer here. And what we need to do now is check again. So we find the mid again, and the mid will be here at this position. And when we find this mid, right? So mid is here now, right is here, right is here, and left is here. So this is the new mid now. And we do the same thing. We check if this is greater than our next element. And it's not. So after doing this, mid is currently one, right? So this is what our mid was. And we added one to that mid. So one plus one is two. So now the left is at this position, right? And this is, again, the peak number. This is exactly what we need to find with one um, number that's lower on the previous and one number that's also lower on the other side. Um, unless there are the exceptions where it's either at the end or at the beginning, like similar to these cases here. Okay, so I hope this helped to understand why binary search is used to solve this problem. And I think when we write the code, it's going to be more clear um, and implement. And when we implement the solution, you can see um, how we use these uh, mid and mid plus one to check what is um, our next number and then based on that result we're able to shift our pointers over and narrow down our search space awesome so i'm back in the code and the first thing i'm going to do is define my pointers so left will start at zero and right will start at um, the length minus one so length of nums minus one 
And what we're going to do is we will do while left is less than right. We want to find the mid. So to find the mid, we'll take left plus right. So we're just adding the two indexes and we are taking the floor function of that. Um, and w this will give us our mid. So by floor function, I mean it's taking the um, lower value uh, if it's a decimal in that case. So that's why I'm using this operator. And after that, what we need to do is do our check. So if our mid is less than is greater than our mid plus one mid plus one so in this case what we need to do is we need to uh, reduce our search space from the right so we will set right equals mid okay um else we will move our left index forward right so left is going to be equal to mid plus one and we are going to return our left index. So return left. Okay, yeah, looks good. All right, so I'll go ahead and run code. Okay, great, yeah, so that works. So yeah, this solution is accepted because um, we found our mid to be this position three, but the question says that you can also have um, a mid that is at the end, right? So this is also considered a valid answer. So that's why the output looks different from accepted, but this is actually um, a valid answer for this question. Awesome.